So anti-malware is a group of products which protect against malware. So, so what is malware? Malware is malicious code. It's code which bad guys use to get into your systems for their purposes and use your uh, systems for their ends and steal data from your systems and commit a number of other crimes if, if possible. It is a serious threat. It, it shows up in statistics repeatedly as you know, the number one concern, and this could be in healthcare, in retail, in, in, in various sectors. It's also kind of a multi-level crime as well because it's used to commit different crimes and commit uh, enabling crimes. So, for example, somebody might break into your system and steal data. Then they sell it on the black market to somebody else who uses it to commit another crime. And it has new variants these days which are particularly nasty, such as ransomware, where the malicious code encrypts your information and demands money to decrypt it. And we're seeing a lot of that these days. Okay, so anti-malware works at a couple of different levels. There will be a piece of code running on what we call the endpoint, which is the device being protected. That could be a workstation, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone. Uh, but it could also be a server, uh, and that's something which a, a lot of organizations overlook. Servers can be kind of a breeding ground for malicious code. And, and by malicious code, we're talking about things like viruses, uh, worms, but also trojans, spyware, and so on. There's, a, there's quite a range of these different attacks. And that code filters incoming files. It screens them to make sure that they're not infected. So whether this is somebody sending an email attachment, whether it's somebody bringing in files on a USB key, other removable media, or whether it's malicious code uh, coming in over network traffic. That piece of anti-malware on the endpoint is going to stop it at that point. In addition to looking at files as they come in, most of the modern anti-malware products are doing other kinds of detection. So they're looking at suspicious network activity, they're looking at what's going on in memory, and they're, they're really examining the, control, the, the activity on the machine to spot things which are indicative of a malware attack. So a second part of the anti-malware solution is typically a management console, which is used to examine and maintain these uh, endpoint protections. So, first of all, if you've got a lot of endpoints to protect, you want assistance in pushing out that code to the endpoints. And then you want to make sure that it's installed properly, that the policies are set correctly for those machines, and that they're getting the correct updates. Then you want to hear back from those endpoint devices if there are any problems. And so, a centralized remote management console would enable the IT department, the IT security people, to see what's going on with the anti-malware protection. And this could alert you, for example, if somebody's turned off the anti-malware, which, which tends to, to be a problem, or if it's out of date, or if there has been uh, some infection detected, then it alerts you, even if you're controlling you know, thousands of machines, and these could be you know, everything from a laptop to a smartphone. So the main benefit is that if you install it properly, if you manage it properly, a good anti-malware product will protect you against all of these different types of malicious code and all these different types of threats. But if you dig a little deeper and, and if you're trying to sell this, the customer's going to want to know, well, what, what are these threats? What are they protecting you against? And there's a number of them. First of all is the lost productivity if you do get infected. Uh, it can just take time to clean up. Uh, an infected machine or machines, uh, and it can be costly in terms of unbilled uh, expenses. Also, it can, it can take data out of your organization, which can be a huge loss to an organization. It, this malicious code can exfiltrate uh, intellectual property, uh, which can damage your business. It can also uh, expose personal information, which then leads to various regulatory problems or lawsuits around exposing people's private information. It can also damage information if you get an infection. Unfortunately, the people who write malicious code test it in the wild. They, it's possible to get infected by a piece of malicious code which isn't working properly, and it 
deletes your files. Some malicious code actually intentionally deletes your files. And then you also have problems in the area of uh, losing storage and bandwidth to some kinds of infections. So a benefit to the organization is that you prevent that. I mean, if somebody's using malicious code to send spam from your systems or to commit uh, denial of service attacks from your systems, it's going to use up your bandwidth. And if they're using their malicious code to store illegal content on your system, such as pirated software, pirated media, uh, then, again, you can find that this malicious code and its exploitation is actually consuming resources. When it comes to selling an anti-malware solution, it's very easy to ask an existing client or a prospect, what are you doing for anti-malware these days? And you ask it like that because it kind of gives them the benefit of the doubt. There are some organizations which aren't doing anything, uh, in which case they're obviously a prospect for this uh, service. But also, it allows them to say what they have in place at the moment. And it could be a legitimate and you know, fully paid up good antivirus solution. Uh, or what we often find is that they're using a free anti-malware product, uh, possibly in violation of the licensing laws for that because a lot of free anti-malware uh, shouldn't be used for commercial purposes. Or it's one of, the, one of the free options that are out there. And so you want to have a number of follow-up questions to ask in that case. Uh, you want to make sure that you know, if they say they're using a product, it's properly licensed. Some hardware, uh, laptop computers, for example, may come with anti-malware on them on a trial basis, but it expires. The organization doesn't know that it's expired. And so uh, you want to, if you can, try and audit in some way, either through questions or possibly an audit of their systems, find out what they're doing. You can, you can do a free uh, malware uh, scan of a system uh, online, and that will often show that the malware they've got is, the anti-malware system they've got is out of date. They do have infections on there that they don't know about. And then you get to say, well, look, you know, your current solution isn't working, a free, this free solution isn't, isn't working, or you haven't paid for this solution. That's why it's not up to date. It's not catching this stuff which is on your system. So once you start having the conversation about what anti-malware solution they're using, and particularly you know, if, if they have a solution in place, you want to ask, so are you getting a lot of complaints about the current solution? Are people turning the current solution off? And when does the current solution expire? When you're choosing which anti-malware solution to sell, you may want to look at how it integrates with existing management consoles out there, IT systems such as Kaseya or LabTech, uh, because you want a solution which fits in with how your, uh, your clients are, are doing business and how they're managing their solutions. One of the other benefits of a good anti-malware solution is that a client that is using that is protected against a variety of compliance and legal uh, exposures. So if there is an infection uh, and uh, personally identifiable information is exposed, for example, there would be regulations under HIPAA for healthcare data or PCI uh, for retail data, uh, there can be sanctions implied, there could be audits and, and so on. If any of those investigations or, or even a lawsuit by people whose expo information was exposed, you're going to be in a really difficult position if you don't have anti-malware in place. It's such a, an established part of basic security protection. It's going to be very difficult to justify not having that in place. And that's a point, I think, to stress to, to organizations which maybe haven't taken anti-malware seriously enough yet. They are exposed not only to the damage that the malware itself can do, but their choice not to use it. There are a number of issues with free anti-malware. One of which is you have to ask yourself, if it's free, where's the money coming from to support this product? But also there are legitimate free products such as the uh, anti-malware which comes with Windows, sometimes called Windows Defender, which does a good baseline protection. However, it doesn't have the detection in all of the areas that a good anti-malware suite will have. And so we can certainly run good anti-malware solution alongside that, but you need something on top of that protection. Selling a good anti-malware product supported by a good vendor can help your clients in another way, which is 
to clean up after an infection. Now, you might say, well, how could we have an infection if they've got a good product? Well, unfortunately, things happen like people turning it off. Uh, maybe they're testing some software or they're doing something, they forget to turn it back on, the system gets infected. A good uh, anti-malware vendor will have support which will address that, will help talk them through getting uh, the thing cleaned up and preventing it happening again. One objection you may get when you're pitching an anti-malware product is this idea that they can't see things coming, that they can only protect against known threats. And so you'll have a headline and your client will call you up, well, is it protecting me against this? And the answer is usually yes, because the technology in anti-malware products today doesn't just look at known threats. It looks at the way in which threats occur. It looks at evidence in the code of the potential to be a threat. Uh, there's a technology called heuristics, which doesn't look at individual threats, but looks at groups of threats and can recognize even, even what we call a zero-day-based threat and protect against it, even if it's never been seen before. Adding anti-malware to your product portfolio is one way to derive more revenue, more value from your clients in a fairly simple and easy way. But it also adds more value uh, in your client's eyes to you as a provider because you're providing this additional protection, protecting them against these additional threats, and you are going to be a source of knowledge and expertise for them in this area on whom they come to rely.